If you're a Blender user, no matter what stage you are, a beginner, a hobbyist, or a professional with several years of experience, there is always a few things you could do to speed up your workflow and improve it. In this video, I'm compiling a number of tips and tricks to help you speed up your workflow. Let's start with working with object mode tips. If you find yourself reusing the same tool over and over, but it's buried deep in menus, right click it and add it to your quick favorite. Then next time, just press Q to access it. Number two, we have quick effects. If you want to add smoke, water, fur, or a quick exploding effect, use the F3 shortcuts and search quick effects. Then choose whatever you want. Number three, randomization tool. In the same search box, you can search for random transform to randomly scale, rotate, or translate selected objects in your scene. You can also tick the scale even option to scale the objects evenly. Four, cursor to select it. You can snap any object to the location of the 3D cursor. Just select the object and then use the shortcut Shift S, then select Selection to Cursor. If you are moving multiple objects to the location of the 3D cursor, they will be moved to the same location on top of each other. To keep their relative position to each other, turn on Offset in the options. This trick also works in edit mode. You can move vertices, edges, faces, and even carve control points to the location of the cursor with the Shift S shortcut. Again, make sure to turn on offset so that the faces, edges, or control points don't collapse into one point. Number five, repeat action. You can repeat any action you make in the viewport by using the shortcut Shift R. This works as many times as you press it. It will just repeat the previous action with an offset. Number six, transform from cursor. All objects have a pivot point at which they are rotated and scaled, but you can also use your 3D cursor as the pivot point. Use the period key or full stop on your keyboard to access the pivot point menu. If you want to use the object's origin as the pivot point again, use the period key and then select median point and that will switch back to the origin as the pivot point. This shortcut also works in edit mode for faces, vertices, edges and control points objects as pivot points. Using the 3D cursor as the pivot point is great but it does not work for animation. To achieve a similar effect, add an empty object and parade whatever you want to the animated empty. Now the empty will be the pivot point for scaling and rotating of the objects. This trick is great for animating cameras. Parent the camera onto a circle, animate the circle rotating to get a smooth camera rotation around an object or scale the circle to get the camera moving forward or backwards. If you liked using objects as a pivot point, you should know that a similar effect can be achieved for meshes and curves in edit mode. This is called hooking. Just select the faces, vertices, edges or control points of any curve that you want to parent and use Ctrl H to parent them to an empty that you can control in object mode. If you want to hook the vertices to an existing object, select that object first, then select the mesh or curve and tap into edit mode. Make the selection of the points you want to parent, then use Ctrl H. This time select hook to selected object option. This trick is great for controlling cloth simulation or making a superhero cape. Just make sure to use the hooked vertices as a pin group in your simulation. So in this part, let's look at uh, some modifier tips. Working with linked objects and modifiers. When working with modifiers, it can be pretty annoying when objects snap from one state to the other every time you try to edit them. What you can do is make a linked copy with Shift D and remove the modifiers. And on the original object with modifiers, make sure to turn on the edit mode and on cage options. Working with the curve deform modifier. A quick way to add deformation based on a curve to, to any object is create the curve deformer. Make sure it's in the same location as the object you want to deform. Select the object, then the curve, and use Ctrl P and select curve deform from the options. Then select the deform axis you want in the modifiers. Ben modifier helper objects. When working with the bend modifier, it can be tricky to, to find the right bend axis. You can use an empty as the origin and it will make it more easier and you get more control too. Displacement textures. 
If you want to add extra detail, use the displacement modifier and height maps. I recommend UV coordinates and turning on edit and catch on options of the modifier stack and previewing what you're doing easily. Texturing details using ambient occlusion. If you want to add material detail to your mesh easily, use the ambient occlusion node. You can use it to blend two textures. Here I use it to add most detail to the rocks and add a color ramp for more control. If you are using EV, this trick only works if you have ambient occlusion turned on. If you want to swap the inputs of any node, drag the input while holding Alt to swap them. Hard surface modifier stack. When working with hard surfaces, try adding these three modifiers in this order. Edge split with edge angle turned off, solidify with only rim option checked, and bevel with harden normals on. Make sure to turn on auto smooth so that the bevel harden normal option works properly. Just right click on the mesh to get the auto smooth option. This modifier stack makes it easy to add surface details like cracks. Just use a knife tool and select a few edges and give them the sharp edge option. To mark sharp edges, use Ctrl E shortcut to access the sharp edge option. Geometry node edge marks. If you want to add wear and tear detail to your objects, add a subdivision surface with a level 2 after the three modifiers and then add a geometry nodes modifier. Then store the edge angle into an attribute named sharp and use it as a mask in your shader. If you're trying to draw curves, start with meshes, it's much easier. Extrude vertices using E and add a subdivision surface for smooth curves. And if you want round corners, just bevel the vertex using Ctrl Shift B. Then in object mode, right click and, and convert to curves. You can add thickness with the bevel option. If you have my quick functions add-on, this is done for you in just one click. If you are tracing images with curves, set the handle type to vector and extrude the curve points to sharp corners of the image and then start moving the control points to follow the smooth part of the image. You can copy a single value or multiple values of one object to other objects by right clicking the values and using the copy to selected option. The last object you select is where you will copy from. If you want smooth camera movement, use the track tool constraint. You can set it up in the constraint panel, but this is a quick tricks video. So just select the camera first, then the object you want to track, then hit F3 and search for track tool and that will do that for you. You can use the knife intersect tool to make cuts of one mesh from another in edit mode. Another thing, did you know you could, you could do booleans in edit mode? This option is under the face menu in edit mode. The selected faces will be used as the cutter object, but you can swap them in the pop-up menu that shows up. You will also find more options like uh, using the difference intersection or union booleans. You can also turn selected faces into wireframes under the face menu in edit mode. Animation tips. If you want to make copies of an object that has keyframe animation and move them around, parent them to an object and move that. Otherwise, they will always snap back to their animation position. The parent can act as an offset. Another thing you could do, if the only thing you are animating is rotation and scale or other properties that are not location properties, you can delete the location channels and you are now free to move the objects around. To switch between the keyframe timeline to the graph editor where you can see these channels, use Ctrl tab. If you are in the graph editor, you can isolate any channel you want by using Shift H. Or show all by using Alt H to reveal all the hidden channels. And lastly, did you know that the graph editor has modifiers for animation? You can access them in the side panel by pressing N. You, you need to have at least one channel selected. You can add a noise modifier, a cycle modifier to cycle your animation into a loop or set limits and more. Thank you for watching. If you want a longer list of this because I didn't want to make this video long, you can go over to my website blendereverything.com and you'll see a more detailed list with screenshots and shortcuts that are, you can use. See you in the next video.